Hi, everybody. My name is Pat Carmody. I apologize for this suit. Uh, I came from a political function. Believe it or not, I'm a judicial candidate. This is not smart for me to be here tonight. But uh, so remember, uh, vote story slam Tuesday at the primary. <laughs> the reason I came here tonight was I invited my friend that I grew up with, uh, Saf, Steve Stafford. And he's sick as a dog, but he came out here tonight, and he didn't know I was going to tell a story about him. <laughs> Saf makes a bad first, second, third impression. <laughs> so I met him when I was 16, and I told him he was going to come over to my house. I said, there are two rules. My father is six foot four, weighs 270, he's a bear. He travels to work six days a week. He comes home, the day he's home, he drinks, he sits in his chair, and you leave him alone. You don't poke the bear. That's rule number one. Rule number two is I have a younger sister, just my father's very protective of her. So, and, and the other thing, I don't know if you guys are like this, but I still call all my friends' parents. I'm in my 50s, Mrs. Smith, Mr. Johnson. I, I do that. I, I call them by their names like that. So, and when I'm 75 in a wheelchair, I'll still be going, Mrs. Smith, can I get you some orange juice? It's just, it's not. So, Seth, the first time he comes to my house, Seth comes into my house like Kramer from Seinfeld. He just bursts in, he never knocks, he comes flying in the house. My father's in the bear, in, in the bear in the chair. My father's there. Seth flies by and goes, Hello, oh, hey Frank, how you doing? And he goes into my room and my father like wakes up on, who the hell is that? <laughs> He's like still like angry, but the, you know. The, and then the second time Seth came to my house, he asked my sister out on a date. <laughs> so he asked her out on a Saturday night. On Friday night, he calls me up and goes, hey, you want to go to a movie? And I'm, going, I'm pissed you were taking my sister out. He goes, oh, come on, come to a movie. I go, okay, let's go to see James Bond. Because we agreed. We go, the agreement was James Bond. We go to the movie theater. He's driving a hostage to him. The next thing I know, we're not at James Bond. We're at this movie that will forever be burned into my memory. It was called Flesh Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Flesh Gordon is a soft porn sci-fi comedy, like a worse version of Meatballs. Every joke in the movie is a double entendre. Emperor Ming is Emperor Wang. The island, they, the planet they live on is Porno Mongo. I, it still runs through my head. Two hours of my life is gone because this movie, and no one laughed in the entire theater except Seth. <laughs> So Zaf laughs at the whole movie. I am bitter. We drive home, I don't say a word to him. And he's trying to work me. He's a nice guy. He said, come on, Pat, you gotta admit it's good. It's good. I'll prove to you it's good. I'm like thinking to myself, like, you're nominated for an Oscar. It's not, it's not, it's not a good movie. Saturday night comes around, I'm watching TV. It's late at night, my sister comes in, she sits down next to me. She's got no color in her face. I said, Stella, what's wrong? She says, your friend, your friend took me to this movie? <laughs> I said, don't tell me. Oh, yeah, this flesh thing? <laughs> and the thing was, he thought it was funny. And I, and I go, you can't tell Dad. You can't tell Dad. He'll kill him. She goes, I am not telling anyone. I am taking the secret to my grave. <laughs> Sorry, Stel. <laughs> now, my father eventually wound up liking Saf because Saf would burst in the house, come in. This is my father describing. So this teenage friend of yours comes in. Your mom and I are sitting on the couch. He comes in, plops in between the two of us, puts his arms around us, and starts watching TV with us, laughing like a maniac. That guy will laugh at anything. You have no idea. <laughs> the other thing about Seth, when every person in the house, he'd go right to the refrigerator. And he'd open the refrigerator and then complain. And, and complain about the lack of food. Now, my grandfather, Pop-Up, uh, died, and we had his freezer mailed to our house. And it was in the basement. My brother, younger brother Mike went downstairs to check on it, opened it up, and immediately closed it, ran upstairs and got sick in the bathroom because it was filled with spoiled meat. It was disgusting. So my mother, my sister, and I are sitting at the kitchen table debating what, who's going to have to clean up this freezer. My brother's in the bathroom yelling, not me, and we're doing that. Saf bursts in the house, goes to the art refrigerator, opens up the door, and says, Mrs. C, you're starving your kids again. This is ridiculous. I look at my mom. Now, my mom never played a practical joke on anyone in her life. My mom just gives me the nod. <laughs> I said, Steve, you know, Sam, Sam, there's a freezer full, full of food down in the basement. And it was like a horror film. He goes, oh, great. He's walking down the steps, and we're looking at each other. We hear the creaking. Doo, 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 doo. 
when he opens the door, we hear this blood curdling scream. He runs out of the house, he turns to us and says, what is wrong with you people? He runs out of the house and he never opened another refrigerator in the house. <laughs> now he's a grown guy, his wife, Deb, two wonderful daughters, Blair and Brooke. My kids love him because we went to the Phillies parade together and he was the only adult with us. And I have small, three small children at the time. So I'm like, kids hang on to me. We're on Market Street, it's a man house. One kid's on a telephone pole, another kid's on a mailbox. The Phillies thing goes by, the floats go by, and Sam jumps down to follow them and goes, come on kids, follow them, and disappears into the crowd. <laughs> so my kids think he's a great guy. <laughs> Sam's dad, uh, I call him Mr. Sapp. Sam's dad was Sheldon. And uh, Sheldon passed away last year. Uh, at the funeral, um, all the people got up and talked about Saf's dad, because his last name is Safran. They called him Safi, because like the children singer Rafi, he would go around, sing songs to kids in the neighborhood, and they all loved him. He would go to old folks' homes and sing, and they were amazing. During his funeral, one person after another got up and told stories about Safran. And at one point, one of the grandkids told how his grandfather had walked him every day to elementary school, and the parents were going to go on a vacation to some place like Disney World, and he was crying because he would miss the walks to elementary school. And as this one speech after another about this wonderful man went on, it struck me that Mr. Saffron was this man who was such a goodwill person, such a kind person, that he expected everybody in turn to be the same way. And he laughed at everything and he expected everyone in turn to be such the same way. And as the service was going on, I looked at Saff, I looked at his brother Ken, and I realized the acorn didn't fall far from the tree. And my point is, first impressions aren't, don't matter. It's the lasting ones that do. Thank you.